All right, here we are in a 2020 Starcraft 2321 open bow runabout for sale here just off the beautiful freshwaters of Norris Lake, Tennessee. It's actually just over from where we're taking our video at on this one. This has been in a rental fleet, and this is a 2020 model powered by a Mercruiser 6.2 liter inboard outboard stern drive engine. There's no hour meter on this, but the hours were read right off of the um, onboard uh, computer that's on the engine. So it was verified with the uh, computer. That's actually the most accurate uh, way to read the engine hours versus if you do have one with an hour meter. Sometimes those hour meters can be off just a little bit. So it's always good to verify that with the, uh, with the um, authorized service dealer when they hook it up to the computer, which is again, what just happened on this one. Now, this one does come with this 2021 aluminum tandem axle trailer. We've got disc brakes on the front axle. We've got the trailer guide post. We've got two inch ball. And we also have a five flat on your trailer wiring connection. The four flat is when you do not have brakes. The five is with. So most vehicles actually, if you're thinking to yourself, wait, I don't have a five flat hookup. Most of your vehicles that are equipped with the, I believe it's called the seven pin or it's a little circle. It's on most, uh, most vehicles. They do have adapters that will plug right into that seven way hookup. And then um, and actually you'll get some that are uh, both a dual where they'll have it either a four flat or a five flat hookup. So actually I believe this is a 2020 model uh, trailer. Or, I'm sorry, a 2022 model trailer. It was, um, manufactured in October of 2021 I think those model years go to the next year after about I want to say the cutoffs around August so but either way it is a 2020 model boat again about 368 engine hours on it so we're here for our video walkthrough tour now there will be several of these uh, of this particular fleet this is the lower hour um, boat in that particular fleet and I believe in the better condition of course we're kind of getting these rental fleet units listed one by one so sometimes we don't know what the rest of the fleet's bringing and until they make their way to us so we do have a nice four-step swim boarding ladder right back here on the back and the extended swim platform and that gives you some more swimming room from this uh, Bravo One Out Drive, which is an upgrade as well. So now this uh, Bravo One Out Drive, that's trimmed back in normal use. That's going to be, that's going to come in a lot more up and down. So you're, uh, that's one reason why people do like those extended swim platforms. They're going to put your swimming surface a little bit farther away from that propeller. This is a ski tow hookup right here. This is where you want to pull anybody doing any uh, towables, um, your tubes. And other towables, you're going to want to use that attachment there and not the tower attachment. The tower is only where you want to pull skiers and wakeboarders. We also have the integrated transom walkthrough right here. We've got two storage compartments along the way. This is going to give you access to your onboard battery. That's a 2020 model battery. It's a 24 MS. The M stands for Marine. The S stands for Start. So it's a Marine Start battery. Group 24 size. Bimini top is overhead. Uh, that's attached to our wakeboard tower. And I'm going to go ahead and complete the entry down the boat. Let me turn right back around. Just kind of show you where I came from. So we got a nice, this engine cover is going to double as a nice sun pad. And again, you've got that walkthrough, which is going to keep wear and tear off of your seats and off of that engine cover or the sun pad. Nice large bench seat integrated in. Got three stainless steel cup holders right back here off this bench seat. Another storage hatch um, in the floor here. That's a separate compartment. And that would be one of four kicker stereo speakers. We function tested those. Those all pass function tests just fine. We've got a pair of swivel captain seats uh, basically the driver and the passenger seat both of these are going to either swivel or slide forward or back and then here at your driver's station you've got another one of those nine stainless steel cup holders right here 
just in uh, front of your steering wheel. With function test everything on here, we do have a functional blower, a functional bilge pump. Um, all the navigation lights work, your anchor light and the, uh, the running lights. We've got a courtesy light, that little blue light right there, right in the middle of that bow walkthrough. This boat is not equipped with docking lights, so this is this is essentially an extra switch right here. Do have a working horn, and we've got 12 volt power outlet right here. Up here on your dash, we've got a battery bolt uh, gauge, engine drive trim gauge, engine temperature gauge, engine oil pressure gauge, engine tachometer gauge, your speedometer gauge, and your fuel gauge. All of those appear to uh, to function just just fine. Uh, now sometimes your uh, speedometer the pickup will get clogged on that out drive and so sometimes that use is intermittent but that can be cleaned and made functional very easily this one's rated for 12. here's your kicker stereo this is am fm usb or auxiliary input cover kind of went flying there right put that back am fm usb auxiliary input we've got the noa NOAA weather band uh, for your. Um, should be here. Let me see. Turn this on. So you get the weather band and Bluetooth inputs and four speakers. So there's that kicker logo pop up, and then I'll trim through there. So there's your AM, FM, weather band, Bluetooth, USB, and auxiliary. And again, four kicker speakers and right here before we head up to the bow I do want to show you got a nice large in-floor storage locker that's on a gas shock that gas gets a little bit uh, falling out of place right there that's just gonna keep this a little bit more of a weather tight seal nice large storage compartment down there and lower that back down I right, walk right through our Walk through here up to the bow area, nice large seats in your bow storage area. You've got four of the nine stainless cup holders accessible up here in the bow, two towards the back, two towards the front. Here's your other set of your four kicker stereo speakers. Got two cleats up here on either side, and this would be an anchor storage locker. That's where you would put your anchor and chain and road. And then we've also got all your seats are on a hinge right here, which you'll hear me talk about how that makes for very easy access because what it allows you to do is lift this up with one hand, use your other hand to get what you want out, and then lower it back down versus actually having to uh, physically pick up and remove the seat. Um, same thing for these large ones here. These are on a hinge. And those lay right back down in there. Same thing over here on the starboard side. I already showed you that in-floor ski locker. So now as we work our way back toward the engine compartment raise this compartment for you so you can see the size of that storage tank under there and now let's go ahead and raise that engine hatch you can do so with this one over here on the on the port side we'll raise that up we got those two gas shocks going to kind of help hold in place and give you a little bit of support whenever you are lifting up and then here is that 6.2 liter Merc Cruiser this is a 300 horsepower V8, and again the Bravo 1 outdrive. This is also fuel injected. There's that marine start battery right over there. Again, 368 hours on this one. I do like how they put the divider in here. Now this, um, you've got some screws here that will allow you to remove um, a larger section of this divider for whenever you're doing servicing on the engine, but otherwise it's gonna allow you to kind of fill in this side of the uh, storage compartment a little bit more fully all right we'll go ahead and low, lower that down so that kind of wraps up here on the interior of the boat but before i crawl out i do want to go ahead and start showing the wear and tear that we've noticed on this one um, you've got a rip in the upholstery back here on the sun pad and we've got another one right over here on this um upholstery over here on the um gunnel Driver's seat, passenger seats look great. Actually, I believe all the rest of the upholstery really looks good in this one. You get a little bit of staining along the way up here on the top edge. Uh, but from a condition standpoint, 
I don't think we saw any stretch seams or anything like that. Um, oh, there was one other little scuff right over here. A little scuff there. And then, right over here where this um, windshield lowers, you've get, it's made a mark right up here near that cup holder in the gel coat. And this little pad right here, you might reposition this or replace this. That's, that's kind of gotten a little squash and could be very, very much why you've got a little mark here. Uh, up around the tower feet, things look good. That's usually an area where you'll see some stress cracks. Um, yep, looks good over here on this side as well. So the tower looks great. Bimini uh, canvas looks good on this one. Minimal uh, upholstery. Wear and tear. Might have a little bit of a stretch seam right in here where these zippers are, but otherwise, uh, tower canvas is, is in good shape. Um, oh, there was a few marks in the in the floor here. Let's see if I can find. Oh, excuse me. Play that windshield back down. Yeah, so right in here, and we'll have photographs of this. A few little marks right there where something's kind of nicked that gel coat right there. And. Yeah, you get a little bit of a scratch in the floor here. You got like a little non uh, or a textured non slip grip in the floor. And then a few little marks over here on this gunnel. And then I think it's one of the few places we did see some stress cracks right here around this drain. There's a few in there. And then you can't tell it. This it could, could have been a nick in the uh, gel coat underneath this and that's a, a sealant that they just put there to kind of seal that up or that could be some kind of adhesive they got down there that just needs to get removed another little scratch in that non-skid surface right there and then a little bit of a wear right there on that corner but again most part i would rate this uh cockpit in the interior and um very good very good condition especially for the uh the realm fleet boats and again we function tested everything on there and everything appeared to function just fine. Gas cap is um, usable, but there uh, there would have been a little uh, cover that attaches to this. So that's an easy replacement. And then we've got a few other little marks in that gel coat back here on the swim platform. We're gonna show you those now. A little bit of a uh, stress crack there, a little bit of an impact there. All on that same line along. We've got three more of those kind of marks into that gel coat right in there. And then a little bit of, little bit of cracking in this uh, extended swim platform in a few areas or, or scratches. And this would be a little bit more indicative of a, uh, of a stress crack the way they've kind of gone out like that. So, all right, bear with me here. I'm gonna slide off of that uh, nice extended swim platform. I'll go ahead and telescope this swim boarding ladder back into place. Lay that down so you can see how that goes. Can a little mark right here where uh, just forward of that ladder. Uh, somebody probably did not have that pushed in all the way. Hit that pretty good, maybe a little mark there. Getting this Bravo One out drives in good shape. Aluminum props in good shape. Get a uh, few little scratches on the bottom of this drive. We'll see this a lot. And your bellows look to be in good shape. Anodes look to be in good shape also. Here's the other side of this little drive skeg right here where it's, it's hit a few things, but it's not done any major damage. And then again, these uh, the shift and exhaust bellows all look good here. All right. So let's start heading down our sides here. This is gonna be the most of wear and tear, and this is very um, typical of all of our fiberglass uh, rental fleet boats, is you're gonna see dock rash and fiberglass marks along the exterior. Now, the lighting's gonna really catch some of these. It's really gonna hide some of these, so we're gonna be kind of moving the camera as we go along um, the edges to try to uh, let you see these little areas. You know, that's a mark that's just barely into the gel coat. But we uh, will represent these exactly as possible. So we're just going to kind of work our camera up and down, let you catch all these angles. Um, so here's another um, one of the tower feet. No stress cracks right in there. We'll mark in the gel coat right in there. 
We're also going to have photographs of this. Sometimes these photographs, uh, especially on that black hole, a lot of these marks will look a whole lot worse than they actually are. Um, even whenever you're standing here walking up and down the sides of it, some of these will kind of get hid with the, uh, the different reflections here. Uh, that one is into the gel coat there. That one there, just, those are just barely in the gel coat. This one's a little bit deeper. And typically the more noticeable they are, the, the more deeper they are. And another mark right there. And there's some more of that dark rash in this area right in here. Got some fiberglass showing in a few spots. Another thing that uh, our photographs would do is you're going to catch a lot of the reflections of, of other things around us here where the boat's at. The, the parking lot and the concrete uh, retaining wall back here. So sometimes it's really kind of hard to see, but now, but now again, the more prominent these marks are, the deeper they are into the gel coat. So, I think I did a few, kind of a few scans of that little general area to give you a feel for the condition there. We'll keep moving along, and more up towards the bow of the boat, and then we're gonna have some more, more fiberglass marks. more fiberglass marks when we get up here near our trailer ball. So one of these right just underneath that uh, rub rail right there. And then you can almost follow that line down. We've got our trailer hookup connection, another good little mark right here. We're gonna keep following this bow wedge down because we got a few other marks down here in the white. Now this is all still up above the water line here. And as we continue to go down now, we're getting down towards the water line. A few other like scuffs and scrapes. And then we're gonna have some scratches kind of following this. Um, center line down on the hall and we're gonna keep following this back for a little ways so you can kind of see now um, when you get under the water line here these are some of the areas that would be that you would want to repair especially if you were gonna leave this boat in the water and if it was not gonna be on the trailer or on a lift now your stuff above the water line um, don't make that a priority Actually, if this is going to be a first boat for you, I would even go so far as to say don't repair any of those yet. Give it another season or two. Let you kind of get the hang of it and the feel of it. You'll become a, um, a better driver, more competent driver. Because uh, you, you, especially if it's a uh, first boat for you, you're going to end up putting your own marks on it. So, so wait until you kind of master it. Then if you want to go uh, redo a lot of this fiberglass, then you can. So th um, that's a little mark where that gel coat's kind of cracked off of there. And again... Um, these areas below the water line, you're going to want to at least seal any area, especially like this, or go ahead and get th these areas repaired. Okay, now we're coming back up above the water line here. So that one is through kind of that gel coat. And then again, the more, the more prominent these are, the more they're going to show in the photographs and video. And then again, we do have a lot of more reflections over here as we get along this side. The sun's hitting us good. Some dock rash right on that line. A few other little grooves here and there. There's another one right there just below the water line. Again, that's that's one to either have go ahead and have uh, fiberglass repair done or at least seal those for now. A few more marks in there. Again, down, uh, down below the hull, we're essentially pretty good down here. I, th I think the bulk of the below the water line was right up there along that, um, that uh, kind of center of that deep V hull. Got a good little mark there. Get one little there. Again, here's our other tower foot right here. Everything looks good there, free of any stress cracks. And we're almost back to the transom again over here on the port side corner now. A few more marks along this rub rail here. And now we're back pretty much where we started. Come back up here to the uh, 
swim platform over here on this side looks to be in in uh, really good shape actually a few i think there was a few marks over here on this corner of the platform and i know we definitely we started there so i think that's going to wrap things up for us on this one today or starting to get to the end of this one again this is the 2020 starcraft 2321 open bow runabout for sale or bow rider you know i have this called shovel and everything some people call this a ski boat um it is a stern drive boat or an inboard outboard um it's got a kind of a modified deep v on it but it is a open bow so some some are going to call it a bow rider some are going to call it a runabout and some are calling it an open bow but they all essentially try uh mean the same thing it's a it's a fiberglass hull runabout with an open bow again this uh, aluminum trailer is included tandem axle with brakes and the guide post 368 engine hours on this one we'll have the full specifications and all the features posted at our website for your convenience down in the video description there's going to be a direct link that will take you right to the listing page for this one where you're going to see the asking price listed right there as well as all of our contact information you're, you're not going to have to do any scrolling on our website if you follow that direct link um, of course our website address is www.yournewboat.com if you, if you do uh, go straight to there, you'll want to look for the Find Your New Boat button. Then that's going to load all of our inventory and order price and just scroll down until you get down to the 2020 StarCraft 2321. Uh, but again, for your convenience, there's going to be a direct link down in the video description. You can click that or open that up in a new tab, take you right to the page for this one. If you able to contact us through there, we do like to remind you uh, when you call us on the phone, if you get our voicemail and you want to return phone call, please be sure to leave a detailed message let us know what listing you're looking at what questions you have we're very frequently in areas without cell phone reception is actually where i'm standing right now it's one of those areas so if you leave a uh, detailed message let me know what questions you have and what listing is you're looking at either whenever we finish with the customer or return to self-service area we'll get your message return your call even if it means we leave uh, the answers on your voicemail just to save some phone tag and also if you send us an email if it's been one business day you have not gotten a reply please check your spam folder we're very good about getting replies out generally um in as few as 68 hours six to eight hours during a business day but um rarely does uh, is it more than one business day so if it's been over a business day check your spam folder um if you still don't see it in your spam folder give us a call and um and if you miss this leave us a message because if uh if you if the reply is not in your spam folder then maybe um it went to our spam folder on the, on the uh, front end of it so anyway that's all the public service announcements as we conclude here you're going to see two things pop up in in the screen the top left corner is a shortcut that will take you directly to our playlist there on our youtube channel which if you're trying to look at boats that are still available that is where you're going to want to go is look at the current listings playlist we've got two playlists one for sold boats one for current listings top left hand corner of the screen as the video concludes will be a direct link to our current listings and the top right hand corner of the screen will be a link to subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't already it's a great way to get notified of new inventory as it comes available in our area and I thank you again for joining us again this is the 2020 starcraft 2321 rental fleet bow rider for sale here again on the beautiful fresh waters of north lake tennessee and i thank you again for joining us